One of the questions I get asked most often is, what is your favorite theme park? I've been to parks on three different continents, ridden hundreds of roller coasters, and so asking me to pick an absolute favorite is like asking me to pick my favorite child. I don't have any children, but I imagine that's probably what it would feel like. I've done several videos ranking my favorite roller coasters, which is already a huge challenge, but I feel like ranking favorite parks is so much more difficult. Just based off of one visit, you could have a completely different experience than the next time you go. And so for that reason, I decided that when I made a video about my favorite parks, I would not rank them because I love too many places too much that I simply could not order them because believe it or not, I do not have one all time favorite park. These are my 15 favorite parks after basically pulling my teeth out, trying to figure out which ones would make the list. It was so incredibly difficult, but these were the 15 that I. I came up with before we get going I want to mention I know I have a lot of friends in this industry affiliated with some of these parks and I just want to mention that this is nothing personal I apologize if your park does not make this list it was not anything you did there's so many amazing people that work at these parks I really wish I could include them all but for this I just had to narrow it down and so this is what I came up with in no particular order starting things off we have none other than Cedar Point America's Rock and Roller Coast for a lot of enthusiasts this is the park this is the place that they've got to get to at some point in their lives. It's a little tricky to get to. It's up in Northern Ohio on Lake Erie in Sandusky, a place that's kind of middle of nowhere. It's in between Toledo and Cleveland. But simply put, it's a place like no other. They arguably have the best collection of roller coasters in the world. Plus with an on-site hotel, beach access, what isn't there to love? It's always a pleasure to visit Cedar Point. Next up is another favorite of mine. This is Dollywood. Ever since I started going to Dollywood, I've tried to go back at least once every single year. And I've been successful in that, oftentimes going multiple times a year. That's because this place is just so cool. It really feels like a home away from home. They have amazing food. It's a beautiful park, beautifully landscaped, and they have a great collection of roller coasters. Plus, the park is growing so fast that it feels like there's always something new. And Pigeon Forge, Tennessee in general is just a really fun place to visit because there's always stuff that you can do outside of Dollywood. To me, I don't feel the stress of going to Dollywood like I would Cedar Point where you gotta go, go, go. Dollywood, you can take your time and just enjoy it. Our first international park of this list is Alton Towers in the UK. This is one of the most unique parks I've ever been to. I've only been once, I did two days here, and boy am I glad I did too because this park is huge. There's so much to take in. They got a really neat collection of rides, and the thing with this park is that they can't build above the tree line, so they really have to get creative. And Merlin loves going with their darker themes for this park, and so each area and each ride just has this really weird, wacky, sometimes strange theme that, I don't know, it's a mood. I dig it. Plus they have these massive gardens in the center of the park. I mean, if you didn't know where you're going, you could easily get lost here. I'd love to go back here one day, and I wish that it wasn't so hard to get to. The next park I wanted to discuss is probably the most different on this list, and is also the one that I bet the least amount of people watching this have been to, and that's Glenwood Caverns in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. This is easily the smallest park out of all of these, but it is so cool. I've always made the argument this is one of the coolest places in America, maybe even the world. They only have three roller coasters, but you don't even really go here for the roller coasters. You go here because of its location. Glenwood Caverns is located on top of a mountain. You take a gondola up to the top. They have rides that take you out over the edge. They are terrifying. It's a very well-themed, cute park. I've always said it feels like a mini Silver Dollar City, even more so because they have cave tours included when you come to the park. It's such a neat little place. If you ever get the chance to visit, please do so. You won't regret it. Let's head over to Japan for Fuji Q Highland. And for those that have been here, you know this park kind of has a hit or miss reputation. Some people just had a terrible experience there. I did not. I thought Fuji Q was fantastic. The park isn't too big, but they have four of the craziest roller coasters in the country, maybe even the world. It's got so many cool quirks. There's a lot of rides here that are just so bizarre, including a haunted house walkthrough and a haunted mine where there are scare actors in there and they touch you, plus some weird little dark rides, and oh yeah, four of the best roller coasters in the world. And if you get lucky, which we were not, you have a gorgeous backdrop of Mount Fuji. Heading back to the States, let's go to the border of North and South Carolina for Carowinds. I've always really liked this park. It has such a cool charm to it. It's so well taken care of. Cedar Fair has really gone to the effort of sprucing it up the last couple years. They have some great rides. It's a good looking park. They have some good food here too. In my opinion, Carowinds doesn't get enough love. Everyone talks about Fury, but the rest of the park really is awesome. I always have a great time here. 
Over on the east side of Spain sits Port Aventura Resort. And for this video, I am also including Ferrari Land in this, even though that's technically a separate gated admission. I'm talking about the entire resort for the sake of this video. In the video I did ranking my favorite parks in Europe, this actually came in at number one. It was a tough decision, but this place is just so cool. It is absolutely stunning, beautiful theming, some of the best rides in Europe, period. And the park is huge. I mean, you really could spend days here just doing everything. Like FujiQ, the operations might not have been the best. Well, when you focus on everything that this park did do well, this suddenly becomes one of those parks that you have to do at some point. Let's go to the sweetest place on earth for Hershey Park. And I've gotten some hate before because sometimes I've said that Hershey Park is right up there with Cedar Point for the potential for best amusement park in America. Hershey Park's roller coaster collection is stupid good, especially now that they added a B&M Hyper. Almost every single ride here is just exceptional. Plus, when your name is Hershey Park, I mean, you kill it on the dessert game. I always look forward to a visit to Hershey, and especially now after their new Chocolate Town debut, my love for this place has only grown. Our next park park is really two. This is kind of the same case as Port Aventura. I'm combining both Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios Florida into just one Universal Orlando Resort category. And the main reason I'm doing that is because like Ferrari Land and Port Aventura, I wouldn't visit one without the other. Every time I come here, I love park hopping, taking that Hogwarts Express over to the other side, and you really have some of the best theming in America here. I know Universal sometimes gets a lot of hate for having too many screen rides, but even recently they've been stepping up their game. I mean, Hagrid's is unbelievable. And with that new Jurassic Park coaster on the way, that has the potential to be one of the best coasters ever built. Going to Universal always puts a smile on my face. And don't hate me, but yes, I would choose it over Disney World every single time. But moving on, let's go over to Germany for Fantasia Land. And wow, I fell in love with this place as soon as I stepped inside. After only one day here, I was so depressed leaving because I did not want to step away from this park. In terms of size, it's actually fairly comparable to Fuji Q in that it's not super big, but they just pack in so many attractions and they take theming to the next level. The theming at Fantasia Land is easily some of the best I've ever seen. They intricately weave some fantastic rides in with this immersive environment and they show no signs of stopping. They just opened up Rookberg in the world's longest flying coaster, Fly, and it just looks amazing. I mean, if you didn't want to go here, you should absolutely want to go here now that they have that. Seriously, can't get enough of this place. Heading over to the west coast to Southern California, Knott's Berry Farm is my favorite park in California. Like Fantasia Land, and Fuji Q, it's got that small kind of mid-sized park vibe, but Knott's is loaded with charm. It has this really cool history where they have this historic section called Ghost Town, where it's just this recreated western area that's really kind of the reason this park is around. They started adding up roller coasters, and so this park really brings in the best of theming and thrill rides into one place. I think Knott's is just so cute, really fun atmosphere, and they have the best haunt I've ever been to with Knott's Scary Farm, so it can't get much better than that. Let's head back over to Japan for Tokyo Disney Sea. And when you strictly look at the themed areas, not really including the rides, just the theming, this is the best I've ever seen, period. Disney Sea isn't really known for the thrill rides. I mean, they only have two roller coasters, but the immersiveness is bar none. I said this in my Disney Sea review, but it's seriously like they had absolutely no budget for this park and just went crazy. I cannot believe that a place like this exists. If you're a fan of theme parks, this is a place you have to visit before you die. It will blow your mind. Back over in the States, Kings Island is located in Mason, Ohio, and in my opinion, this is just a very well-rounded park. They have a really solid collection of rides. There's so much to do here, and everything is just well-kept. It's just a really nice-looking park. In my opinion, this is like a great home park to have because they have enough here that you won't get bored. There's plenty to do. It's just a good atmosphere. Food is good. It's easy to access, and like I mentioned with Dollywood, it's so easy to just take your time here, relax, enjoy a couple rides. What more could you want? We're down to our final two, and we have one more park in America left to talk about, and that's Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. This is the sister park to Dollywood, which we talked about earlier. And you know Craftsman's Valley on the right side of the park, where it's just that long, narrow pathway filled with some old-fashioned theming? Okay, so take that and make it an entire park, and that's Silver Dollar City. There's so much to do, so much to look at. They really did a great job with keeping things immersive. And every ride here is really story driven. They really try to build in a backstory with each of their rides so it doesn't feel like you're just going to ride a roller coaster. It's all part of that experience. And when you have rides like Outlaw Run, Time Traveler, Powder Keg, I mean, these are all fantastic rides built into the terrain that is this park because everything is so mountainous. How they managed to fit everything in is just amazing. 
which leaves only one park remaining, which of course has to be Europa Park in Rust, Germany. This park may not have the best roller coasters, but they have a lot of them, and the theming is just unreal. They have so many different themed areas that you could just spend an entire day walking around exploring. They've really geared everything towards families, and because of the sheer size of the park, it really encourages you to do multiple days here. Europa Park, I feel like, is much more experience-based, where it's not all about the rides. They want to make sure that you have stuff to look at, shows to go watch, people to interact with. Yeah, they have street performers just walking around for you to go talk to, play games with, that kind of thing. It's, it's insane. I feel like I could say this about a couple of the parks on here, but I really feel like Europa Park had that magic. That you step inside, you forget about the outside world, and you just leave feeling happy. So those are the 15 parks that I have chosen as my personal favorites that I have experienced. Obviously, I haven't been to every single park in the world. That'd be a little challenging to get to. But I've hit a lot of the major ones. And because there's only 15 spots, obviously, I know there's tons of places that I left out. What about the Disney parks or Universal Studios Japan? Holiday World. There wasn't a single Six Flags park on here. And again, just understand, I really do like all of those places. I've had a great time at all of them. But when I really focused on the places that I love and what keeps me coming back to them, this is the list that I came up with. And so I'd love to hear from you guys. What are your favorite places to visit? Are there any places that I talked about that are now on your bucket list of places you got to get to one day? If so, let me know down in the comments below. And if you're a first time watcher, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. I do roller coaster and theme park content from places all across the world. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. <laughs>